You know, I'm not the biggest fan of the color green. Also, this room is terrible for white balance. I think it's like very yellow lights with a blue wall and a kind of cream, creamish carpet. Anyways, this is just part one of my journey to reloading my first bullet. Got a bunch of RCBS stuff. No in particular reason, it was just kind of the first thing I saw most people use. Though now watching more reloading videos, I see a lot of people using Hornady stuff as well. But now I got a Brass Boss, Trimmer, I Charge Master, not Charge Master, par Charge Light? Something. And then the heart of it all, the uh, RCBS Rebel. Oh yeah, and I also uh, went to the store today and picked up my first die set. I got, uh, I got two more coming in. It's a uh, 762 by 39 and a 44 Magnum die set. So I'll be attempting to reload those for the first time. And I 3D printed a little box to hold ammo. Also doubles as a shell holder. And then I also 3D printed the one over there. And then that's the one that came into the kit or whatever. But yeah, it's just everything's coming in slowly. I will come back another time with more stuff so hopefully I'm just waiting on a table oh actually let me show you the location this is where the table is going to go it used to be my little print uh, photo printing stuff but that's going to get relocated and I'm going to set this entire wall to be my, like my reloading station and then I'm going to put this wall to be oh that's a picture of me as a kid that would be a, this section to be more for my 3D print stuff. So yeah, we'll see until that gets here. That'll be the next time I come back. Just wanted to do a quick update. I have finally got the table and I've installed the table. It's a little wobbly, but it's fine. But as you can see, the table is almost done. I uh, have a press set up right here. Have my char uh, powder dispenser. I really don't like this hand priming tool. I'll use it for now, but until I get a better one, that's going to be what I use. And then brass boss and then case trimmer. And I was uh, practicing with a 10 mil and two nine mil casings just to see how it works. But yeah, no, it's uh, coming along smoothly. I will be making my own ammo soon. I uh, got to go buy some 44 mag ingredients. But yeah, no, this is cool. Check this out. That is very satisfying. Okay, so I know it's been a while since my last clip. Oh, forgot that was there. It's been about like, what, four months since my last clip? But since then, I have since got com components. Got some large pistol primers. Got some H110. And I, oh, what, I forgot the XTP horny bullets. That's what I'll be reloading. Is a uh, 44 Magnum, hopefully. Let me double check. Yes, 44 cal, 240 XTP. And I brought my ammo down here. And as you can tell, there's some pretty, depending on who you are, cool stickers on them. Especially like that one. But yeah, no. Gonna hopefully start tomorrow if I don't start today. So see you in the next clip. All right, let's begin the case cleaning. Where's my 44 mag? Oh, it's all over here. I wonder if I can do all of them. How much is this way? Around two and a, two pounds? Two and a half pounds? How much of this do I have? I got some walnut media. Five pounds. Where is the manual? What is the maximum you can do? Capacity. It has a total capacity of 14 pounds. Okay, I know that should be fine then. And I don't have a knife. Be right back. All right, so I brought my knife. It's time to open this up. It's my uh, Benchmade titanium whatever number I forgot. I paid way too much money for this thing, but I do love it. It's such a nice knife. I have the other version too, but that one's more of a showpiece. Let's open this up. I kind of want to like document my entire process, so I might cut off some bits, but... For the most part, I'm going to try to keep everything in here. What is this? Oh, that's cool. I didn't know it came with polishing stuff, so... 
I guess I'll add everything to it. Yeah. Okay, let's get my... Move this out of the way, just wanted to check the weights of it. So wait, what's the polishing stuff for? Okay, whatever. Let's get this in here. Now I know this has some potential for like lead exposure, but one time's not gonna hurt. And then I'm gonna I plan to do the rest of it outside. Oh, let's try not to mess this up. <gasps> that could have been bad. There has to be a way. I got like this. Just put about half of it in it. Put the polishing age. It smells like a farm. Now let's add the rest of it. for a bit. There's the power. Oh, that's cool. What the? That looks very awesome. I like that a lot, actually. That looks very cool. The Whoa. Okay. You're done there? Alright. Now let's just throw all the 44 mag in there. Ooh, that one's staying. Oh, no, it I can see it kicking up a lot of dust. Let's put the cap on, but that was very satisfying to see. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna let that sit for an hour or two, or what time is it? 6.30? Yeah, I'll let that sit for an hour or two. And then we'll continue probably tomorrow, because I'm gonna go play Monopoly with the family. Man, butterfly knives are so cool. Okay, so I'm back from my game of Monopoly with my family. I just turned this off. I think it may be polished for around two or three hours. But, man, look at that. That looks so much cleaner than it was before. And not much medium in it. That's pretty good. Okay, so let's get to dry tumble. And then I'm gonna separate the case from the media. So unplug that. And I'm gonna do this. Let's do it on this one thing. I promise the audio will get better soon. I'm just using my, uh, I don't want to say GoPro, my DJI second gen GoPro thing instead for now. So we're going to have to bear with me with a bad audio, but I did bring my camera down with the better audio equipment. So that should be improving soon, hopefully. But let's get these casings and media separated. Is that safe? I hope so. So that's good enough. That's warm. So how am I gonna do this? Can I just pour it in? Oh yeah, that's not bad.
Oh, I do not like that amount of dust getting kicked up. Yep, looks like all of it. Definitely after today, I am doing this outside. <laughs> that is a lot of particulates I don't want to be breathing in. Let's close this. I am recording, right? Indeed I am. Okay, it's locked. Ooh. Oh, that's not a sound I like either. good? I mean, they're not necked, so they should all be relatively clean, right? Yeah, let me grab my phone. Yeah, they'll look clean enough. Take this out. Where should I put this? Um, it's gonna leave it on the floor for now. And this stuff, I guess I can just leave it in here, right? Or, yeah, how am I supposed to get that out? I'll worry about that later, I can stay in here for now. What the heck? Oh, this thing feels so cheaply made. There you go. Set this off to the side. With the tumbler. Okay, so what do I do now? I deprime them, right? Hold on, let me look it up. Oh yeah, that's right, case trimming time. A lot of walnut media over there. Should probably put these in a safer location. Where can I put them? That doesn't feel safe. Put them right there for now. Okay. How long do these guys need to be? No, that's 44 special. 44 rim mag. So the overall length, max length is 1285. Let's see if I remember how to use these non digital calipers. I do have the digital ones upstairs, but let's see how well I remember how to use this. This is zeroed. So remember correctly, this is 127. 127. 1. 27, is that correct? Max case length is 1285, trim length is 1275. If I'm reading this correctly, this should be good. Yeah, 127. It's 127 on the dot. So yeah, this is good. Um, I'm gonna make this my, this fit, oh, it does fit, cool. So that should be my good one. All right, I'm gonna just check the case length on all these. Wait, are these shorter? Well, I guess, yeah, that's the trim it to there. And they're not going the above, so... Yeah, these look good. I did I did kind of want to trim one just to see it how it works, but these are all below the trim length, according to the Hornady book. Whoops. Unless I'm getting something completely wrong. These are all pretty good. Checking the trim, because I don't think I have to trim any of these. These are all relatively good. So after trimming, that's not where I want it to be. Case cleaning, that's what we did. Case light, we're not gonna trim. Case chamfer and deburr. Um, I guess we can chamfer and deburr them. I don't think they would need it though, but might as well, right? 
Give me an excuse to use this thingy. All right, let's go. If I remember correctly, actually, I don't remember correctly, which is which. These need to be chamfered and deburred. And this is going to be the done one. Are these all, do these fit? One, two, three, four, five. No, that should fit, okay. Let me figure out which one's the deburr and which one's the chamfer. Yeah, that should be good. That's no, not the right manual. Okay, so I'm gonna assume the long one is the deburr and the pronged one is the chamfer. I don't think it really matters what order I do it in, so let's just turn it on. I don't think I need these anymore, or at least not for now, at least. Oh no. It's no longer zeroed. Maybe if I clean it. Clean it seems to make it work back. So, let's see, where's this one? Still around 79, or, uh, 6970, so that's fine. I am happy with that. All right, let's start doing this. Ah! Oh, that's a sound. I'm gonna assume that's okay. <laughs> that is not a pleasant sound, that's for sure. Like I said though, I think this is only really necessary if I trim them, but it doesn't hurt to do it again, I guess, right? Fuck. Okay, so I don't have a large shallow tray, so I'm gonna use this plastic or uh, this uh, cardboard box that I'm gonna throw away anyways to lubricate it. So I'm gonna go outside and do this because I don't want to spray this stuff inside. All right, let's do this real quickly because I am very cold. Okay, so I made a realization, so I feel kind of stupid, but I just, uh, I was just reminding myself that I could have done the chamfer deburr and resizing after, or not resizing, the chamfer deburr trimming after I resize and deprime the casings. So yeah, I feel a little dumb after that, but that's all good. This just means I might have to chamfer and re-deburr again, so I just wasted all my time checking the case length and all those. But like I said, it's all good. Let me just take these all out of the box. They've been chilling for a couple minutes. Wow, it feels so sticky. So, I don't have a dedicated box thing yet because I want to like 3D print something that can go down there. So when I uh, deprime, all the primers go into that little box right there, but this will have to do for now. This way, what are they really? There you go. Cool. I'm gonna go down? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so for the moment of truth, now to actually deprime. Let me grab my set of dies. We are using RCBS. There you go. Which is which? <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure this is a depriming die, right? This is definitely a depriming die. This is the case holder. I can put that in right away. There you go. Cool. And what are these? So it goes resize. This is this isn't the bullet seating die, right? No, this is the booting the bullet seating die. MG Magnum C20. So what's this middle one for? Oh, so resize. Okay, okay, okay. I used to, the menu used to be in there. Where'd it go? Let me go find it. It's not gonna matter until after, so who cares? 
I'm gonna quickly throw this in here. I don't think it has to go to a certain length, does it? Let me grab this. Oh, it shouldn't matter, right? Oh, did something happen? <gasps> something did happen. That's cool, okay. Is that it then? Yeah, I think that's it. I'm gonna go quickly read the instructions, just in case. Okay, so I actually read the instructions this time and I know what I'm gonna have to do. So I'm gonna have to pull this out. Make it all the way to the top. Yeah. That was probably too low, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm gonna say right away. This is definitely not a tutorial There you go So when it touches what do I do so reading the instructions I didn't even have to lube these because I'm pretty sure these are carbide dies, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure the 44 mag straight wall are cardboard. So I don't even I didn't even need to lube that that was pointless Maybe I should have done more research as I was doing it. So it says to screw it in and then apply the thingy and I tighten this down. I should probably <laughs> let you see, but I have the head cam. So that's tight on there. Means I can take this out now, right? And that should be it, right? There we go. That was resized. Now get my calibers. So let me just one more time. Whoops. Cool. Um, so done, not done. So I'm gonna real quickly do all these, but this is so sad, so watch this. I don't know why, but that's very satisfying. Also, I noticed it just drops straight down, which I find pretty interesting because I do want to 3D print something. So I wonder if I can just like, I don't know, I'll figure it out. But one more time. Or get the camera. That is satisfying. All right, I'm going to do all these and I'll be right back. Okay, so I feel kind of stupid. I, uh, after reading the instructions, which you should probably do, it says that since I'm using a carbide for the 44 Magnum straight wall, they say they don't, it doesn't require any lubrication, but a little bit never hurts, right? And then also, I did also learn that, that uh, well, of course, I was uh, checking the case lengths before after cleaning them, while in reality, I should have been doing it after I resized them, because that's when they actually grow. So I feel kind of dumb, but that is okay. I am learning. And I'm pretty sure a million people on the internet are now yelling at me about it, which is okay but I'm gonna have to resize, see, check, recheck the lengths of all these. And this one I'm gonna resize. Well, I might as well resize all of them. Cause I'm gonna resize them all down to 70 or 75. I'm gonna have to check the book again. But yeah, no, these are definitely longer than when I first checked them. So it was a waste of time for me to check the length in the beginning. But like I said, I'm only But no, that gives me an excuse to actually use the trimmer now. So that's good at least. So I'm gonna recheck all these and then check the case length and then I'll be back when I have to trim them. Trim them. Also my head cam has ran out of batteries so until that charges up again I, you're going to be relying on this offset camera. But hopefully the audio is better because I do have a microphone attached to that. Okay so I definitely don't have enough battery for this for my head cam. I'm gonna go run upstairs and charge it real quickly but to get it real quickly I uh, put the resized case trim in here. If I remember correctly this should be the one that's at the correct case trim length. Yeah. So it is around, oh, this is now it's below, god dang it. So maybe because, no, well, it is zeroed. Whoops. Oh, well, that's fine. I guess I'll have to find another one, but anyways. Oh yeah, see, this one's perfect. So I'm gonna use this one to get the sizing right. 
And since this is already at 1.75, if I remember correctly, this should be okay. Why aren't you going in? But I put on my 44 pilot. I've loosened this up, so once I get it in there, I can resize the next thing, and then I will just tighten it up. So I'll be back once I can get this stupid case in. I don't know why it's not going in. Okay, got it in. Time to size. So I'm gonna stick this in there. It should be at the correct size, so once it's in, I can just move that here. Just tighten this up. Cool. Do a couple of spins. How does this come out? Should theoretically still be the same size. Yeah. 175, if I remember correctly, that is a trim length. I will be putting them on here. These are all the ones that need to be trimmed. So that's in there. How did this come out? Whoa, that isn't good. No, that seems about right. It definitely doesn't seem even though, that's for sure. No, it's even enough. All right, well, I'm gonna run this in again to see if I can get it more smoother. See, look, why isn't that going in correctly? What the heck? What about this? Whoa. Yeah, no, I... Yeah, this is a dead case, and I cut that way too much. Oh, uh, where's the, my trash pile? I'll put it right here. I trimmed that way too much, which should not have happened. What about this one? This is a uh, two before eight. See, look, that isn't going in correctly. Did that trim off enough? See, oh, trimmed a little bit, but I can go a little bit more. No! I'm just gonna be brass everywhere now. What's the length of this now? See, like, that's perfect almost. Could use one more, but that's fine. So this one's good. What about this one? Oh, you're fine already. You're good too. See, you're too long, so put you in here. Why is that so hard? Well, only 10% battery lining. Well, you saw what I'm doing. I will come back when this is charged. Okay, so I have learned very quickly that I really do not like cutting the cases the trim length or whatever. For whatever reason, I think I, like, it pushes in too much and you can get cut more than what you actually want to cut off, which is pretty annoying. But we had uh, two of them, I put two of them over there. Those were, uh, what, what do I want to call them? Well, this one's a sacrifice. This one, I like how long it is and I'm going to use this to like predetermine what, where to put this. We had, Two casualties and one sacrifice. Yeah, that's the words I was looking for. So we had two casualties, one sacrifice. We're we'll gonna keep the sacrifice here. So for those other ones down there that I wanna do, I can trim them down to length, which according to the Hornady, I think it's Hornady book. The Hornady book says 175. So these are all around 175-ish. I think the lowest one might be like 171, 170. The two over there, I accidentally got down to like 160 or 155 or it's something stupid. Cause like after those became too low, I kind of just like wanted to test it out. All right, see how much pressure I can put into it. And it just like the more pressure you put onto it, the more it gets down. So I've kind of learned that like to trim it correctly, you don't put pressure. You just kind of turn it and hope for the best. So no, that's my face. But yeah, no, that's what I was gonna go about. Yeah, we lost three. Started with 50, lost three. We still have more down here, which is okay, but I'm learning, I'm learning. I've kind of learned that you can't push it down all the way, so. Now the time to chamfer into burr, and I don't want to do that on camera, so you'll see me back after that one. Okay, so I am very tired. It is currently 12.30, so I'm gonna save those 50 for later. I uh, re-trimmed uh, and deburred them. Deburred and chamfered them, whatever. But I'm gonna start using the primers now, and I do have safety glasses on, but I'm gonna try to do the primers now, and I'm only gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, let me put one back. There you go. Yeah, so there should only be six. I'm only gonna do six, because like I said, I am getting very tired, and I just wanna get this over with. I have a revolver that I can put it through anyway, so it should be fine. So I did flip them over. Let's see if I can put this in correctly. There you go. Now, just, oh, I forgot the, Shell holder, right? Uh, doesn't want to let go. 
There you go. I just put the shell holder on here, right? Oh no. Do I not know how to do this? Oh, does it have to be off? That's stupid. Okay, well, I'm gonna do that real quickly. I wonder if I can just grab my remote and have a remote trigger to record it, because that'd be a lot easier. But anyways, I don't know. I find this dumb, but I guess that makes sense. But you were supposed to take this off, have the shell holder, and then you can apply it. Which, I guess it makes sense, but oh well. I can just be an idiot sometimes. But okay, so if I know how to use this correctly, I can close this off. Apply it on here. Looks like it's probably not flush. Turn it. All right. <gasps> One's in there. Okay. Uh, okay, so. Hope this is in focus. Come on. <gasps> is it in? It is in. I just installed my first primer. <gasps> it's a little deep, but I'm gonna hope that's okay. It's rather it be deep than flush, right? All right. Try one more. Ooh, I probably should not put my face in front of it. <gasps> there you go, now that's flush. Cool. So I'm gonna finish the rest of them. I'm gonna go check with an actual manufacturer casing just to see like it maybe, hopefully it's not in too deep. But I think it should be fine. Okay, so I might have pulled another dumb. I seated the primers and two of them look to be two seated, but I hope it should be fine. It isn't too bad. And then the other ones came out almost perfect, so two of them might be bad, and I guess we'll see if I lose my hands or not. But, okay. So, prime them, and like I said, I did a dumb. I should have expanded them first, so I'm gonna try to use this thing. I was told that the spacer ring is supposed to be used for 44 Magnum specifically, so I will just use it and see what happens. Okay, so I have my expander now with the washer, because it says they should use that for 44 Magnum, but we'll, okay. Gonna screw this in. Wow, it's really getting in there. So it just touches. No. It doesn't seem right. That seems like way too high, right? This is up all the way. Weird. I don't, that doesn't feel right, but oh well. Where's my tightener? It is. Make sure this is locked on. If I can get the right size. All right, that's in there good. Oh, okay. Again, I might be stupid, but I'm pretty sure I only have to put in the spacer when working with 44 mag after I already set everything to length. So I just realized I forgot to put in the shell holder, so I have to redo this anyways, and maybe that's why it wasn't working. <laughs> I am literally showing you as I go. Okay, so I had a little trouble figuring out how to set this up, but I think I finally got it to where I like it. And I already did, can you see it on camera? No, you can't. I already did, already flared these cases. I don't know if you can, I wonder if the camera will focus. I don't know if you can tell or not. Can't even tell if it's focused, but I did flare them. As you can see, the bullet slides in. It's nice and flared, I guess. This one has not been uh, expanded and it kind of is weird to get in. So I'll do a quick, there we go. Now see, seat's in now. So should be good. Now I expanded those six and I wonder what the next step is. Okay, so this is the fun part. Uh, we finally get to do powder. So hopefully, oh, these are all actual ones over here. Let's see if I can figure out how to use it. Uh, so originally I had an idea that I want to put it on like a little table under the table. It's because like I want to like fill the powder, seat bullet, and then do that individually. But there's only six casings, so I think I'm just going to fill the casings individually. Can you see? You can't see anything. Hold on. Okay, so I readjusted the camera, you can also be seeing things. So originally my idea was that I wanted to put the powder thrower under the table. Can you turn on? It turns on. So I wanted to put it under the table because I have like a mini table underneath because I wanted to like charge powder because I've kind of seen this thing takes kind of a while to do stuff. So I wanted to like have this on the under the table doing its own thing. So like it spits powder, 
and then while it spits powder, I can go to my press and use it. And like, not screw with the thingy, because this table does shake. It's not that sturdy, so I was like wondering, oh, maybe that could throw off the powder measurements. So, but since we're only doing six casings, I don't think it's a big deal. So we're just gonna fill those up individually. So let's calibrate this thing. Calibrate. Calibrate. Uh, is this 50? I guess they're both 50. 50, cal. Put the 100, cal. Dope. What the? Let me do this again. Cal, cal, 50, 100. So if I should take this thing off, it should just be 50. Take this off, it should be 50. Cool. So I'm gonna put the tray on there. Zero. All right, time for the moment of truth. So what we're gonna be using is uh, H110, because I heard this powder is pretty good. Throw that in there. That stuff looks crazy. I'm not gonna put all of it in it because I don't think I don't need that much. Just enough for it to look kind of neat. There you go. Okay, so I'm gonna go look in my Hordity manual. I have other manuals. I think I have the Lee one, the, uh, what are they called? I'm pulling a blank now. Lee, Nosler, Lyman, and I have the Horny one on my phone. It is Horny? Yeah, it is Horny. Since I'm using Horny bullets, I think I'm gonna use the Horny manual. So let's see how much powder do I need for 44 Magnum. That's 44 special, 44 Magnum. So I have 240 grain, correct? Yeah, 240 grain, XTP, and I'm gonna use, take a screenshot so I can show that on the video. I'm going to use H110 at 1200. I'm gonna go one above the minimum. I know I should probably start with the minimum, but screw it. One 2000, that is 22.1, so. 22, that is way too high, not 520. That would probably kill me. 22.1. Yep. And now, how do I do it? Do I just press go? <gasps> it's doing things. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, that trickle part of the end is gonna take, eh, it wasn't that bad at all. The beep's gonna get kind of annoying. Okay, so can I just put it into the bullet now? Or into the casing? There you go. There's a charged casing. Oh, it's doing it again. It automatically does it. That's so cool. Oh, I didn't expect it to do that automatically. That was a genuine reaction that I was not expecting. I forgot that it did that. That's actually very cool. Ah, oh, that's so cool. All right, put this in there. Okay, maybe it can take a little long, but oh, well, that's fine. I'm in no rush. All right, so how do I cancel this? Cause I don't want it to spit out again. Cancel. So I put this on, dope. So as long as I hit cancel, it won't just automatically sp spit out more gunpowder. All right, almost done. We're like 90% of the way there. Okay, final stretch. I have my bullets and my charge casings. I need to take this out. Never mind. I'm not on the final stretch. Okay, I'm just I'm not too hard. All right, time to read the manual on what to do about this thing. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to like bring it all the way down to the thingy and then add the washer for 44 mag. So I'm gonna read the instructions and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've read the instructions. I'm supposed to put a charged powdered case in here. Yeah, and screw this. And it's said to go all the way until it touches. It touched. And I think it says do one full turn, right? Oh, so after touches, go one full turn back. So touch, one full turn will be one, two, there you go, one full turn. Then lock the die. It said temporarily, so we'll just keep it at that for now. Um, so then it said after you lock the die to put this down, right? Unscrew the cedar plug several times, lower the case, and insert a bullet, okay. So we're gonna unscrew this a bit, lower this down, put a bullet, and then just say go up, right? <laughs> Might as well just bring the manual with me. Unscrew the lower case, insert bullet into the slowly run the case, and bullet, bullet fully into the check the bullet for proper seating depth. Okay, so I just keep doing it until proper seating depth. That didn't do anything. 
So, so that's touching now. Where do I can go? Half turn, half turn, one, two. Oh, I feel dumb. I should be using the spacer. Oh well. One. Oh, I'm probably gonna have to use the spacer. Okay. Ah, oh, dang. Okay. So I'm gonna restart this with the spacer because I'm pretty sure that's what it's gonna have to need because that thing is going way lower than what I'd like it to go. Or actually, maybe I should just continue. Or, well, I already moved it, so I have to restart it anyways. So pull this out again, put a case in there until it touches, bring it down, do a full turn backwards, right? Backwards. So one, two, temporarily lock the thingy and then place bullet in there, but I don't want to do that. I should be doing it with the spacer, so I might as well just do it entirely with the spacer. Or maybe not, I should lock the ring die first. Well, no, it's not going to matter anyways, because like, if I'm using 44 mag and it's longer, the spacer's going to be in there anyway. So what am I doing? I should do it with the spacer. So then when I do 44 special, it should be relatively the same for 44 special. Uh, okay. I know what I'm doing now. This out of the way. Touch the case. So I'll go full back one turn. One, two. Then we'll temporarily lock it. There you go. All right, that should be good. Now we can do this bullet thing. Nope. One, two. Let's get in there. Hope my, hope my big head isn't in the way. Okay, maybe half a turn more, or a quarter of a turn. Quarter of a turn, quarter of a turn? Okay, that's good enough for me. So, I'm gonna, pretty sure that means I'd lock it there now, right? Oh my god, the last step has so, the second to the last step has so many instructions, hold on. Next, adjust the dye body to crimp. While the uncrimped cartridge is still fully inserted in the cedar die, unscrew the cedar plug a few turns. Screw the cedar die downward until you feel touched and off the lower case. Lower the reloader. What is one eighth? Okay. All right, now, uh, I think I made it overcomplicated, so. With the thing fully in there, remove this by around a couple turns, so. What the? It doesn't want to come out. Well, now it does. So about two turns. Then what does it say to do next? Okay, so. Now I unlock this thing. Move this down until you touch the case. It touches. And then it does say to lower it a bit, do about an eighth of a turn. How much is an eighth? So that'd be half, quarter, eighth. Let's go eighth of a turn, check for crimp. There's no crimp. Eighth of a turn, still don't see a crimp. Eighth of a turn, no crimp. Eighth of a turn. Ooh, there you go. A little crimp. Eighth of a turn. There you go, now I'm starting to see something. Is that a crimp that I want? Maybe the bullet can go a little bit deeper. Let's go one eighth of a turn. There you go, I think that might be good. Yeah, let me go look at my other casing. Uh, the crimp's a little heavy. Maybe I should like move it down a bit. So I'm gonna go back an eighth of a turn. There you go. That should be okay though. Yeah, so this one is done. I'm not gonna touch this anymore. This is gonna be my reference bullet. What does the last instruction say? All right, so I have the crimp ready. Lock this down. Where's my finished bullet? This is my finished bullet, right? Yeah, so finished bullet, put that in, and then lock this down until it touches. It touches, lock this now. I should buy some better screws. I'm not gonna lock this yet because I still wanna know if the crimp is too big or not. But, all right. Moment of truth. Put this in here, bullet, oop. There you go. I'm pretty sure the top can go down a little bit more. So I'm gonna untie this, Let's go a little bit of a turn. Nice little crimp. Actually, I should check the overall length before I do that. I probably should have done that beforehand. Where's my calipers? According to the Hornady manual, the case overall length should be about one sixth. How do these come out? One six five. So maybe they can go a little bit lower. This is not perfect, actually. I don't know which one I. <laughs> I don't remember which one I did first, but how long is the manufacturer's? It's exactly one six. Okay. So let's determine if we need to lower the seating, the uh, bullet seating thing. Okay. Let's go. 
pretty good crimp. Overall wing. Okay, so I did go a little bit too low. So I'm gonna back this out a little bit. All right, this better be good because I only have two more. All right, how deep are you? <gasps> Perfect! I wonder if you can, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but that is exactly one six. And I couldn't be happier. Oh, that's so awesome. I wonder if I can, so these three are done. I wanna quickly run these through just to make them to length. Pretty sure one of them is too low anyways, but that's okay. There you go. Yeah, it's a little un it's a little under, but that's okay. I'm pretty sure. What about the other ones? Ooh, this is under by ten. This one looks pretty rough. The last one. Ooh, that could have been bad. Good crimp. Six point oh five. Yeah, that's okay. All right, last one, last one. I'm pretty sure those deviations could just be from the, from the, what's it called? The trimming over there, that was really annoying. So I, they're not gonna be too consistent, but they're pretty, they're in the ballpark. <sighs> six bullets. I made these six bullets. That is, am I in focus or am I blocking the camera? Oh, I'm absolutely blocking the camera. Six bullets, I made six bullets and these are mine. That is very cool. All right, well, I'm gonna go to bed now. I am very tired. It is currently 2 a.m. I've spent all day doing this, but I can't wait to shoot these if they don't blow up my hand, of course. I really like that one of the caution warnings back here says minimize inhalation and skin contact. When just a minute ago I was cleaning my bench and I was wondering why something smelled like uh like the you know salt and pepper. I was wondering why something smelled like peppers. And as I was like sniffing around, I was like, oh, is that the gunpowder? And I started like inhaling the gunpowder, thinking, oh, that smells funky, without realizing what it says in the back. That wouldn't be the first time I sniff things. I uh, have my film development kit over there and I forgot to label which uh, bottles were which and I thought, oh, let me just sniff them to see if I can figure out what's the difference. And I was very lightheaded for the next 20, 30 minutes. I really gotta stop sniffing things. But anyways, I just got back from shooting my hand loads and they went good. No explosions, I still have all my fingers. Why am I still holding this? Still have all my fingers and that's a good thing. And I'm gonna continue to do more but I really hope you enjoyed my whole process, even for how dumb it could be, because I just do things weirdly, I guess, sometimes. But yeah, no, it was fun. I learned some things. I'm definitely gonna change up the process. I really was annoyed by the whole fact that I thought, oh yeah, I gotta trim them right away before resizing, when it was actually the other way around. That was my mistake. And I, yeah, no, that's about it, really. I'm gonna continue to do more, and then I'm gonna make like, a super cut for a new cartridge, instead of doing like this whole first experience thing, because this is more for me thing, and I kind of think, It'd be kind of nice for other people to see it, but no, I'm gonna do like a big super cut of one, just like purely the process. Cause I think I got a lot of messages of people telling me that this was kind of cool and they would like to see a more in-depth detail about it. So when I get better at it, I'll definitely make that video. But I don't know what my next cartridge is gonna be, but it was fun. I definitely enjoy reloading. My least favorite part has to be trimming. I absolutely hate trimming cases. So I'm gonna see if I can find a way to make that better. So yeah, no, hope you enjoyed my uh, coming along for my first experience. I will catch you later.